Yes, it's that time again. Angron, and I could not resist. Man, I'm stoked on this one. When this model first came out, I was hoping that Games Workshop would have sent it to me. They never did, but thanks to the Army Painter, now it is what I have. So, cheers. And uh, this is going to be an intense one. There are so many pieces to this model. I feel lately I've been doing a project every week and it's been a very fun pace, but something of this size and detail because of the uh, end, end goal for this project, I need to break this down piece by piece and give every segment of the model the focus that it deserves. Because I'll be entering it into the Golden Demon or just prepping it for a painting competition. I have to title things in that way to grab people's attention and try to coax them into learning to improve. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Golden Demon, I am going to enter this into that competition. Do I expect anything? Fuck no. I don't think they really like what I do. But what I do enjoy is being part of the gallery that is a painting contest. And there's also just a certain level of detail to express a deeper level in order to enter something into a contest. You need to be able to flip the model upside down and still have it look nice. So I've heard. But anyways, without any further ado, let's get into it. Today I'm going to be tackling the armor, first of all. The base was brought up with rough iron and two very thick coats. It's going to work very well over the color black. Metallic paints are made to work that way. Of course, you can just drown something in paint and it's going to look like whatever color it was drowned inside of, but starting off with a black base coat for your true metallic metals is the best course to take. Then I'll be highlighting it with true copper. Now I also want you to listen to what the light is telling you. As you're searching for your highlights, especially on a reflective surface, you rotate the model in your hands, it's going to move the reflections around, so just try to keep a more fixed perspective in mind, even with true metallics, even where the light can take over and do its own thing, I still am trying to adhere to that general light situation that I'm seeing. The reflections are your target. That is the kill zone, and killing is the sweetest. But oh, 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 spicy. Following along on the true copper, I added greedy gold to the mix, slicing the pie, severing the gradient in unholy richness. It's a demon. It's just gonna come out of me like that. I can't help myself. Just make sure that you are not undoing the previous layer. Shingles on a rooftop, baby. Every layer leaving a little bit of the previous layer slightly visible. Moving on, let us apply a layer of dark wood speed paint. I find myself using these instead of ink lately. Powerful stuff, so I thinned it down halfway and just like the inks, a little bit goes a long way. Lay a nice healthy coat. First you want to be thinking about this in literal glazing terms, like a nice even sheet of tint rolled over a surface to kind of uniformly marry the tones beneath and of course it is also going to help line and define some of the crevices. After contemplating this on the Tree of Woe, I decided to bring some black into the situation. So some quick black lining was in order. Quick. Yes. This video may not be long, but every step of this is an hour plus of painting time. But adding some dark lining will provide a lot more sharpness to the situation and the black tone will give me just a little bit of control where the metallic flake is interacting with the light. I am sort of, you know, taking some methods from what you would see in a non-metallic metal technique and covering up some of the shadows. So I guess it has a non-metallic metal black shadow to it. Once I was satisfied, it was time to cap everything off with just a touch of shining silver. This is the victory lap, but as we say in weightlifting, last set, best set. Be meticulous. Look all over the model, and yes, the silver is, no matter what true metallic color you are highlighting, I would recommend a small amount of silver at the pointiest of peak. You can do a little bit or a lot, but it is going to really extend your gradient. We're going for maximum extension. And one more thing. 
I wanted to take a little touch of plasmatic bolt on the worlds and axe. A small amount of verdigris to break up the brasses. And furthermore, on third thought, adding a diluted amount of white first that will help to create a more of a uh, variety of tones within your patina. I liked the dark take. I, I like everything dark, but I'm, I'm trying to push a little bit lighter. I want to have contrast, I hear. It's a good thing. But yeah, just a little coat of white, and then that plasmatic bolt gives you a mighty fine patina. Verdigree. So here he stands, pissed. I had a great time working on this model. Next up, I'm going to be breaking into the skin, adding you know, striated muscle textures, stippling to the face. I can really play with a lot of textures, and sure, it's for a competition, but every piece is an experiment for me and a chance to just try to tie a different knot. And this model will be, I will be able to share the variety of materials as a form of contrast through textures and true metallic metals and glowing weaponry and who knows what's going to happen on the base. Everything is just black for now. All is darkness. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires you to create your very best metals. Metal is the best after all. Too easy. Anyways, thank you for your support. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe and do check out my Patreon. I can't do it without the support from those lovely individuals there. So, join the Legion, and I'll see you next time. Remain unsaved!